is there something you can say about fundamental principles of judo? Is there over all that time, not twenty over twenty years that you've been doing judo? Uh, it's not approaching thirty, is it? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, quite, getting it's going it's there. It's getting there. Okay, it's getting. We're a couple <laughs> years away, but it's getting there. Um, is there some like principles that have emerged? Like you said, you have to have uh, your center of gravity below theirs. Yep. Is there other kind of both on the gripping side, the footwork side, leverage, and any, anything you can speak to? There's some that have withstood like time, like you have to be able to get below their center of gravity because you have to be able to rotate them around their center of gravity. And then the other one is, that was always a principle when I was growing up and I didn't change until later on in my career was, you have to be able to pull. You need to be able to pull to get them off balance. But when you think about that statement as a whole, it ended with, they have to be off balance. I don't need the pull to get you off balance. I just need you off balance. And when you think about it that way, it allows you to open up the doors to what do I need to do to get you off balance? I could push, pull, I could flinch, I could fake, and you could put yourself in your own off balance state, mm -hmm. right? When you think about people who wrestle, right? If I fake shoot, it causes you to over lean forward, which means you're off balance. There's no pull, there's no push, there's no nothing. I just get a reaction that leaves the opportunity and the door open for an attack. And that off balance could be very subtle. Could be very subtle. And the better you get and the more skilled you get, the less subtle it is. So we should also mention that there is something called forward throws where you throw the person, you know, they they're gonna fly facing forward, they're gonna fly forward. And then yep. backward throw is they're gonna fly back. So and then there's lateral, you know, they actually go sideways, sideways over, like a cartwheel almost. Okay, so the forward throws, there's the one we've been talking about, which is uh, Seinagi, and there's a bunch of different variants, Ipan, Marote, Seinagi, there's drop and there's standing versions of them. And that all, I don't know if there's a way to summarize it, but that's like as clean as uh, getting your center of gravity under theirs as it gets. And then the rest is just gripping variations. Yep. I guess it's all gripping variations on all of these throws, but, um, and then uh, there is, uh, in terms of forward throws, there's the other big one in competition is Uchimata, which is, I don't know, we can try to explain that one, but it, it uh, ends up being where one, or, you're standing on just one of your feet and the other one is up in the air. And uh, I don't know if you put in that same category, Haragoshi, like those kinds of throws where you're kind of a little bit single footed. Yeah, and then, so there's two footed techniques and then there's single, single -footed. footed. Yeah. Ogoshi, where yep. it's like you're doing a mix between the Uchimata and the Sayanagi. <laughs> yep. It's a hug, you, you hug a person and then you turn your hips around such that you're now hugging facing the same direction. When it comes to forward throw, there's regardless of the name of the throw or the gripping variation that you're using, the whole principle is how do I get this person to do a forward roll in midair and land on their back? The more of a forward roll I can get, the bigger the score. If I get like a quarter of a turn where like you land on your side and you don't go over your back, it's a half score. Yeah. But so they all require me to get you to do that forward rolling action. So just if we think of one person, if they do this nice leap forward and they do a roll and their back nicely rolls over the ground, you're trying to do the exact same thing with you connected to them. Well, and if it's nice and it's smooth, it's probably not a full score. It needs to have like somewhat of a violent impact, <laughs> right? So if you yeah. think of a drop say Nagi, if, I, if I'm moving too slow and you still roll over your shoulders and there's no direct impact, it's only a half score. Right. They want the force. The force, the violence yeah. is good. <laughs> okay, uh, so then uh, in terms of uh, backward throws, the, the traditional ones, there's stuff where you trip them from outside their body, like a sotogari. Mm -hmm. It's a trip where you hook your leg onto their leg and you trip them, but your hook it goes outside 
of their legs. And then there's the trips from inside their body. There's a, one foot is called Kuchigari and then the other is Ochigari, doesn't matter. The, the most important thing is outside and inside. Uh, and then there's like, I don't even know how you throw them sideways except foot sweeps. And then there's the foot sweeps yeah. where you can sweep one of their legs from out of them or both their legs at the same time. And like we were talking about this kind of is when timed perfectly, it's it's effortless for everybody involved. And uh, the ending, like you said, is big, dramatic and violent. Yep. <laughs> is there other kind of, th oh, oh yeah, there's uh, sacrifice techniques. Yep. Um, there's a bunch of them. And that ultimately the variations have to do with uh, gripping, but you're basically, you, the attacker fall onto your back sticking your legs somewhere on, on, onto, onto their body, which is like this fulcrum over which they fly and do that same kind of role that you yeah. mentioned. You basically sacrifice your back to the mat in order to throw them into that circular pattern so they hit their back. Right. Sometimes we use a foot, sometimes we don't. Yeah, and so we should probably say, it's okay for you to go onto your back as long as you're clearly demonstrating control over the other person's body. Correct, you can't go to your back in the same direction that your opponent is trying to put you to your back. Right. You have to go the other way. Or you have to initiate you going to your own back. Right, uh, like clearly. And then um, and then there's all the counters, which almost kind of have a whole group of their own, even though they have echoes of the same types of techniques, it seems like they're their own whole thing. Yeah, but they follow the same principles. It's just most counters, like if you wanted to counter an Uchimata, for example, you're trying to throw me in a somersault over my right shoulder. Therefore, I would counter you by throwing you over your left shoulder. Mm -hmm. It goes in the opposite shoulder direction, but in the same somersault idea. And there used to be, I already forget, at this point, forget the years, but it might be 20, before the 2012 Olympics, where they banned, uh, you, you used to be allowed to grab legs in the same way you do in wrestling. So you have basically all the techniques you would have in wrestling um, available to you if you would like. Yeah, uh, It's just that some of the techniques in wrestling are not that effective for getting your opponent to, your, to their back. Yeah, Wrestlers wanna take the other person down in any way possible and have control. Judo wants to take you down, like we said, in a big fashion where your back slams on the ground. Yeah, it has to be to the back. A lot of wrestling takedowns happen because they get behind them. Yeah. And then they they part tear out. Yeah. So, uh, but the, Judo banned all touching of the legs, which is a very dramatic change of the sport. But right after 2012. After, it was after 20, it was In 2012, so 2008, I fought the games and right. everything was free. In 2012, we could only touch the legs as a defensive action or in response to an attack. So I could try to throw you with a normal throw. And then when you try to counter, I could grab your leg. Right. So the, there uh, had to be a secondary technique. And didn't they, like, didn't they disqualify on a first offense? Yep. First offense was a direct disqualification, which happened at the 2012 games to the 57 Brazilian who won in 16. Yeah, She was DQ'd in I think the quarters. Yeah, And it was like, I wouldn't say it was blatant as much as I don't think the act changed the outcome of the match had they not disqualified sure. her. So that's not that dramatic. And by the way, you yeah. say 57, that refers to weight divisions and that's yep. in kilograms. And kilograms is the measure of weight that the rest of the world uses and the United States <laughs> does not. Um, so, and there's, uh, we should say the divisions for, for guys, um, I don't know what the 70, I don't know what the 60, lower level 60. 60, 66, 73, and, 81, 90, 100, and heavyweight, which has no ceiling. No ceiling. <laughs> it's an As important we'll talk distinction, about. yeah. Yeah, it, it is an important distinction. Um, so, and you competed most of your career at 81 kilograms. All of it. All, you never did 73. I never did 73. But you had to cut big for 81 anyway, especially- Towards later. the end of my career, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I overly grew into the division. What's, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember, is it about 180 pounds? 
178.6, I think. And you have to weigh in with the, the, the gi? No, nothing. You're not allowed to wear anything except for your underwear that's at right, weigh in. Confusing jujitsu. That's right. Yep. That's right. That's right. That's which is very nice. Um, okay. So we, would you say we covered most of the throws or no? So the, there's the forward and the backward, there's the sacrifice throws and the counters. Yep. And the and then there's the leg grabs. And we should say for the leg grabs that were effective, it's like um, the big pickups where you yep. just kind of pick them up and try to figure out once they're in the air, what the heck to do with their body to get them to, to the ground. To you the just ground. kind of figure it out as you go. I think the really nice one that, was to me heartbreaking as a fan to see go is oh, I guess what's called a fireman's carry, which is, uh, you know, it does lead to judo like beautiful throws. And the fact that that was gone is, is that one I missed a little bit, but then a bunch of people, I guess, came up with the variants where you don't need to grab the leg. Uh, it's definitely not as effective as being able to grab it, but I'm also on the side of the fence having competed in all three. It was definitely better for the sport to remove it as a whole. It's probably good to cover sort of the whole spectrum of rules of, of judo is uh, there's groundwork. So there's, uh, you do all the stuff on the feet where you're trying to murder each other <laughs> with a giant throw. But then, you know, if the throw doesn't succeed, you go to the ground and you stay on the ground for some amount of time, like short amount of time. You have to move quickly. You have to be attacking. And uh, one, two of the ways you can win is similar to people who do jujitsu is you can submit them, uh, chokes, arm breaks, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. no foot locks. And, uh, and you can Pins. also pin them, yep. which is get around their legs. And this is very, no, this is not like wrestling. You have to actually get around their legs and uh, pin them in, in what in jujitsu is called side control mount, all kinds of ways that doesn't involve their legs. Yeah, and then you pin them for like whatever, 20 seconds, 25 seconds. Yeah, 20 seconds now. Yeah. I think the distinction is their back has to be facing the mat. You have to be past their legs and your chest has to be on the same plane as theirs. Yeah. So it doesn't have to necessarily be on top, but it has to be on the same plane. Yeah. And all of this is, I think, different sports have different versions of this, but it's like an approximation of what dominance looks like. Yeah. <laughs> so pin and wrestling is dominating your opponent. Presumably if you were in a street fight, that position allows you to then do a lot of damage. Obviously submissions is dominance because you're breaking their arm or choking them to uh, uh, unconscious. And then obviously the throw, which is not often talked about, but like if you talk about a street fight situation, a throw is like the best way to murder somebody. Like this could end anyone's life. Yes. It's terrifying actually. So, okay, so these are all elements of dominance. So going back to set of principles, you were mentioning getting your center of mass under theirs, which I think applies for type of um, like the forward Sainagi throws. Is there, is there other stuff? Um, oh, so you mentioned off balance. Yep, there's the off balance one where you can either pull to get an off balance or you can give way to the force, which can also lead to an off balance. Um, you can amplify somebody's force to, so for example, if you push me, you expect a certain reaction that you're ready for. But if you push me and I pull you, now you didn't expect that much force coming out of you, therefore you're off balance. The thing that's distinctly recognizable about judo is like when done at the highest level, like it's it seems effortless when the big throw happens. Yeah, like that's just it doesn't. There is no other sport like it in the in the combat sports where it's like when the timing is right, everything just is perfect. I think you you get that in MMA and um, boxing sometimes when there's With a the perfect, knockout, yeah, perfect strike, just like yeah. where they. It, but it's not just like a hard hit. It's like. It's almost like the with Conor McGregor and Aldo, for example, when you just yep. catch him just right. Just right. And that- like He didn't look like he hit him that hard, yeah. but he hit him just right. Yeah, and like you get to see this all the time in judo. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating.